Hello, this is Akari Hori in my third year at Phil, and I hope to share the outlook I have for my research titled Urban Builder Works by Gustav Klimt and his inspiration from the West and the East. In this research, we closely analyze one of the masterpieces of Gustav Klimt, who is one of the most established users of gold leaf in the Western art history, I hope to discover how the encounter with aesthetics, aesthetic values from different cultures expand artists' creative journeys and use of materials. As for the motif, I have, I have grown up beside a family business of selling gold leaf and powder at art supplies since 1711 in Kyoto and seen its domestic traditional markets such as butsudan or kimono have been rapidly shrinking. On the other hand, uh, having seen the emergence of stunning modern artworks that beautifully incorporate gold leaves, I started to believe that creativity of people with different cultural perspectives can discover the new potentials of materials. Ever since, I have uh, ever since, I have been passionate about searching for the new potentials of Japanese traditional materials in global creative industry. Firstly, I'm going to introduce an artist that I'm going to look at, who is Gustav Klimt. Born to a poor gold engraver in Austria in 1862, we have proven some outst outstanding artistic talent since the childhood. It is notable that he, he had been familiar with the last of the metals uh, ever since he was born, thanks to his father. He started his career as architecture painter with his younger brother. Inspired by progressive art movements such as Impressionism emerged in surrounding European countries, Krim started challenging the conventional and conservative art scenes of his home country, Austria. Uh, he strived to create outlets for the domestic and conventional young artists and bring the best modern works to Vienna, uh, which is his hometown, to forming a group called Vienna Secession. It is also widely discussed that he had been deeply influenced by Japanese aesthetic sense. And later in his career, uh, he, he had come to a decade of golden phase between 1898 and 1908, where he left his distinctive golden masterpieces that I am going to look at now. So the work that is to be analyzed in my research is Portrait of Adili Block Bauer I, completed between 1903 and 1907. Uh, as commissioned by Ferdinand Brock Bauer, who is a Jewish banker and sugar producer, to portray his wife, Adil. This piece is known as the final and truly representative work of Klimt's golden face. The size is um, 138 centimeters squared. It's notable that it's squared. And on on the canvas, a woman is portrayed in a gorgeous golden dress. And as you can see, background is also lavishly gilded with gold. Some critics discuss that this work exhibits Klimt's inspiration from Italy and Japan. So I'm going to look at how Klimt encouraged these cultural aesthetic senses from Italy and Japan and also how the gold have starred in each culture, and then how these elements are incorporated in this work. To first look at Klimt's contact with Italy, it is noted that although Klimt didn't travel a great deal, he frequently visited both Nirvana and Venice. Venice. In Venice and Nirvana, it said that Klimt was inspired by mosaic works produced under uh, Byzant Byzantine Empire between the 4th and 15th century. Byzantine Empire, also known as the uh, Eastern Roman Empire here, was powerful enough to expand into North Africa in early days. 
in their society art played a significant role in promoting religious messages. Over its long history, they have developed this distinctive mosaic art to, to represent holy figures, uh, emperors, church officials, and scenes of daily life, especially in agriculture, for the interior uh, to decorate the walls of churches. In early days, these decorations were mostly made of volcanic rocks or wooden panels colored with solution, solutions made with pigment. But over the period, they have developed the skills of gilding the colored glass sheet with hemp beaten gold foil. Uh, with the continuously developed techniques of gluing, tiling, and coating. Uh, I read some article about the technique, and they said like they tie it, they gild it, glass it to firmly stick the gold foils on the glasses. But as well as the Byzantine mosaics, Clint is known to be different. Uh, Clint is known to be inspired a lot by Japanese aesthetics. In 1873, an international exposition was held in Vienna, which is Clint's hometown. Vienna Expo was the first expo that Japan participated as a modern nation state. The newly established Meiji government was desperate to promote Japan as a modern nation, and therefore they brought brought many art pieces such as wood prints or folding screens, along with this big Shinto shrines or, or Japanese gardens. Japanese gardens. Um, although there's no written report about Clint's uh, interest in Japan, the, it is widely discussed that Clint fell into Japonism at the Expo in Vienna and become an active collector of woodcuts, no masks, ceramics, and textile designs from Japan. And he was also an enthusiastic reader of, of the monthly journal of, on Japanese art collected by Sei Sei Fitbin between 1888 and 1889, uh, which was called Red Japan Art School. Given that his golden phase started in 1898, it can be concluded that Japanese inspiration was one of the factors that contributed his new styles of art. Uh, so although there are countries of Japanese artworks that inspired Clint, the influence of Rinpa School is worth noting. Rinpa School was established in the early 17th century by the brothers of Kolin and Kanzan Ogata in Kyoto. Uh, it directly inspired the revival of indigenous Japanese aesthetics to the daily craft back then in the society, in the Japanese society. Ogata's most distinctive works are folding, uh, as, yeah, Ogata's most distinctive works are with folding screens with lavish golden backgrounds. Thin and broad pieces of washi paper is gilded with thin gold leaves uh, with mikawa or animal collagen as glue. And, and these objects are painted with mineral pigment, gohun powder based paint, or Japanese sumi inks, or sometimes metallic powders. It is notable that compared to the Western use of golden leaves, like that in that in Byzantine mosaics, gold leaves in broad folding screens are so thin in thickness that, so that uh, the surface of washi paper uh, on, that it's gilded on can be traced to, through the gold leaves. And other than completely gilding the surface, there are quite a variety in Japanese traditional gilding techniques, such as kirihaku, uh, where gilding with square, small square pieces of gold leaves, or noge, uh, which is a uh, with thin thread like gold leaves, and finally snago, uh, 
uh, which is the goal is ground like sound so now i like to see how kim has harmonized this case this case from east and west into his own style uh, firstly i'm going to look at kim's original style so kim kim's gilded on strips linen canvas neither on glass like Byzantine mosaics, nor on washi paper like limpa folding spoons. It is assumed by the a scholar that the surface was surely printed with rubbish skin glue and layers of lead white oil paint. Also, he used oil paints like many of his previous work rather than pigments like Byzantine mosaics, nor gofun or sumi inks like limpa. Uh, folding spoons. But as well as keeping his authentic style, yet the aesthetic inspiration from both West and East are seen in this work. Firstly, the combination of small shining elements around, around the lady uh, can be definitely linked to the mosaics by, oh, wait, by the uh, can be definitely linked with the mosaic. Uh, uh, mosaic art by Byzantine Empire. Apparently, Crims used rather thick gold foil than thin gold leaves to make some of these parts or elements especially sparkling. This authentic shine certainly, certainly reminds us of the mosaic paint that does not look like gilded, but more like the actual chunk of gold. At the same time, the fairly gilded background highlights the inspiration from limpa folding spins. It's gilded with thin leaves, so the roughness of the canvas is slightly felt. And this can be linked to how Japanese folding screens are gilded in a way that we can feel the surface of washi paper. And once gilding with a layer of gold leaf, Klimt covered the surface with a thin layer of warm colored oil paint and then sprinkled over, sprinkled the small pieces of gold leaves over. And this technique can be uh, linked with the snuggle expression, which is original to Japan. Harmonizing the inspiration from the East and West, with his original style of art, Krim created a piece. Krim created a piece that is universally valued over the generations. In conclusion, and the encounter with different aesthetic value is significant in sparkling innovative creations. It is suddenly it's the creativity of those artists that cultivate the new potentials of art materials. In Krim's case, he expanded the potential of gold leaves in, in Western art scene. Uh, but now in the era of social media, it would be increasingly important to recognize and share the authentic aesthetic value of our own cultures so that we can all inspire and also be inspired by people who are also diverse, diversely authentic themselves. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much.